Welcome back, you beautiful people, and today is all about trial skills, taking them over to the trail to help you get over certain obstacles. And to be honest, I'm not, I'm not very good at trials, so I brought Chris Smith in to help me do such techniques out there on the trail. Yeah, it needs like, looks like you need some work on those track stands, Blake. So let's get into it and get started on the track stand. So the track stand is one of the basic skills from trials, but a really important one. What we try and do is just find a nice uphill slope. Basically that stops you using your brakes so much as well and stops the bike falling away. Basically I'm just pushing forward with my front foot, turning into it with my upper body. And if I feel my balance moving, I, I correct it with my upper body. So every time that front wheel moves, just keep moving your upper body, keeping that pressure through the cranks. You can ease off, just let it roll back just to catch your balance again. But yeah, that's the easiest way. Just keep looking ahead, down at your front wheel, just see what works for you. Another really important part with a track stand is to actually relax. If you find yourself tensing up, you're gonna be all over the place. Just let yourself breathe, relax those muscles, and it'll make it a hell of a lot easier. Right, track stand's on the trail. Well, this is a perfect situation. Look at this. It's a blind drop. So you can come in with a walking speed, and when you get to the right to the end, you can track stand, spot your line, look over the crest. Yep, I see my line. And then you can drop in slowly. Nice and safe. All right, the same applies when it comes to a bit of a climb, a technical climb. You can track stand before it, spot your line, get comfortable, and lean back and put the power in. Oh, damn it! Uh oh. Bloody hell! Put the power down for the fifth time. <laughs> yes! <laughs> right, this technique is the slap, the splat, or the bump technique. It kind of helps you out when it comes to an obstacle in the trail that is quite big, then you can't really get over with a bunny hop. So what you want to do is you come into it, you're going to lean back, you're going to get that front wheel a bit light, lift it up a bit, splat it, slap it or bump it to get the front wheel up into the air, you're leaning back, then you're going to drive that back wheel just over the, over the obstacle and through it so you don't have to get off your bike in the middle of the trail. Okay, it's not all about speed when you're doing it. You're going to come in, you're going to lean back, bump it, and get that whole bike over. But it's all one fluid motion when you're doing it. You don't want to stop. You don't want to, right, I've got to lift the front wheel. Right, now I've got to do this. It's all fluid motion. You're going to bump it, slap it, or splat it. Do that. Get the front wheel over the log. And when your back wheel's coming, you're going to pull up on the bars. You're going to pull up with your hips. Cool your feet on those pedals to bring that back wheel over. You don't have to do a bunny hop over it. You can just let it go a little bit light so your wheel just rolls over that obstacle and so you can get through it. But right, the last and most important one is commitment. You've got to be super committed through all stages of this slap, bump, splat, attack thing over it because if you're not, you're going to just drive the front wheel into it. It's going to send you over the bars or you're going to get the front wheel up and you're going to drive the back wheel into it and it's just going to stop you. You could end up having a puncture. So you've got to be committed all the time when you're doing the slap, pat, bump, attack. So here's a perfect chance to get all trialsy on the trails. The log across the track, we're going to use the splat technique. Let's hit this hard, commit, get that weight back, lift that front wheel up, fly across the log. So we're going to be taking a look at the front touch or the hook technique. This is a really advanced uh, technique, especially on the trail bikes. The trials guys can go up massive stuff on this. I'm talking six, seven foot tall. They basically hook their front wheel on the top of a wall, bounce the back wheel off of it in one fluid motion and get up on some incredibly high stuff. This picnic table for a trail bike, still pretty impressive. So let's just take a look at the technique for this one. So let's take a look at the front touch. Before we even get into this, we need to be about two or three bike lengths away from the obstacle we're going up. And I'm also gonna be switching. I'm normally right foot forward, so I'm gonna be switching my feet to my left foot forward, so that's opposite uh, foot forward. What that's gonna do is allow a big explosive drive when I go to crank up onto that table. So I've got my front foot forward, and as I'm lifting that uh, front wheel up nice and high, 
I fixated on a point where I want to place that front wheel on the bench. So when I've got that front wheel on the bench, I'm squashed down on the suspension, and I've curled my feet around the pedals, I've lifted that back wheel up whilst pushing forward with my handlebars, driving that bike onto the bench as well. You might find that your back wheel sort of barely makes it up, but just keep pushing forward, you know, pushing the weight and driving your hips forward and that bike will go up onto the table. And once you're on there, it's easy. This is the easiest part. Just roll to the edge, give a quick stab on your pedals, do a mini wheelie off of the bench, keeping that front wheel nice and high. Land back wheel first, and right away, nice and smooth. There's a few mistakes when it comes to using that front touch technique that you can make quite easily. One of the ones I see a lot is coming in with your cranks level. To say it's really important to make sure you've got that good foot, uh, your wrong foot forward, just allows that drive, that instant poof, to lift the front wheel up. If you're coming in with your right foot forward or your strong foot forward, you've got nothing to drive that bike. You're purely trying to do it with your hips and your body. It just won't happen. You really need that rear wheel drive and explosive technique to get you up onto there. So for the front touch or the hook technique, front wheel placement is crucial. If you come underneath, you don't lift that front wheel high enough, basically you're just gonna go straight over the handlebars, probably slide across the bench, which is gonna be pretty cool and make your mates laugh. But if you go too far, you're not gonna get enough lift off that back wheel. The bike's gonna hit sort of there and your chain ring's probably gonna bash into the, into the table. And again, you won't get up on the table. You really need that to be right on the first little bit of the table. As soon as that hits, drive that front wheel in and lifting the hips up drive that bike onto the table. Now where are you going to use this hook? Well this hook technique is perfect when it comes to a step like this, a little ledge. It's got a little bit of a slope so when you're coming in, you're coming in with a little bit of a, a speed. So what you want to do is lift your front wheel up. As soon as your front wheel is tapped there, like Chris has told you, you're going to force your body weight up, pulling on your pedals, curling your feet on those pedals to get that back wheel up, land and put the power down and continue down the trail. Ah yes, logs, the log ride. When you come to the trail ahead, if you're in the car park or you're out on the trail, is a great time to practice your balancing skills when it comes to a log like this one, because you can just get up onto this thing, a little bit of a hook, ride along. This is a good place to start building your confidence in your balancing skills, especially when you come to a bit of a sticky situation out on the trail where there's a bit of North Shore and it's a bit narrow and it's like six foot up in the sky. You don't want to be learning it straight away and chuck yourself in the deep end. Oh. <laughs> oh, so close! Damn it! So let's talk endos. The basic endo as a trials move isn't much use to you out on the trail. Basic endo is where you go along, you pull that front brake on, shift, squash that suspension, and move your weight forward whilst holding onto that front brake. I'll just show you how this uh, manoeuvre now. So we come in, pull that front brake, squash. But that isn't much use out on the trail. What we need to learn is how to move that back end of the bike around. So let's talk through a few techniques and getting that back wheel all the way around. Basically, all we're doing is just starting the technique at our toes. They're so connected to the bike, so you're obviously pushing into those pedals whilst turning with your style, with your feet and your ankles and continue that motion up through your hips and your upper body whilst holding onto that front brake. Whilst looking as well, you really need to look with your head. If you do it whilst looking straight, uh, we will go, just go straight. You actually need to turn and look to where you want to turn. Basically, that will let that whole bike manoeuvre all the way around the corner. I've done this a lot and that's taken the wrong trail. So the super stylish way to do this, to turn around, is the endo. Perfect way to turn around, head back down the trail and get back on the right trail. Oh, I knew left was the right one. <sighs> Silly me. <laughs> oh wow, this, this corner's quite tight. Now this is where the endo is gonna come into play. Just to get your rear wheel round. You can come in slow, do that, and drop in the trail. 
Right, without the end though, even slower, way more awkward. Look at that. So the end though, in hindsight, is way better. So that's definitely gonna help you. You can come in, look at it, you're a turning circle, lean on the front, lock up that front brake, get your body weight over the front a little bit, use your hips together, rear, rear wheel round, drop down, and then you're pointing directly down the trail to more fun. Let's talk side hops. The trials guys can do some massive stuff. I'm talking six, seven foot high, shoulder height. It's not a problem for those guys on their special bikes, but we can struggle on the trail bikes with all our suspension. The bikes are obviously a lot heavier. Side hop can get you out a lot of grief on the trail. Basically, just hop up onto a ledge or hop down sideways. We're not going any momentum going forward, backwards. It's all going sideways, be it on or off. Let's take a look at how to do the techniques now. So again, this is quite an advanced maneuver out on the trail. Before you even attempt this, you need to know how to bunny hop. So if you can't bunny hop, don't even give this one a go. This is a really explosive movement again, and footwork is crucial. You might notice I don't have my pedals totally flat. I've actually raised them up just a little tiny bit. So we're kind of more on this position. As I come into like the explosive part of it, I really squash down into the bike. I almost try and touch my bum on the back tire whilst loading up the suspension, mostly on the rear. Keep your weight more off the front. So get that weight right over the back. And as that suspension squashes in, you look, make sure you look all the time at where you want to land. As that suspension comes up, you drive down with your feet and hop and turn all that energy sideways. You do that through your hips and your upper body and tilt on that bike up and across and land it up on the ledge. So you might be wondering how on earth do we get that bike to even move sideways? The way we do that is by starting with your head. You're tilting that towards the direction that you actually want to travel. Also, a hell of a lot of it is in the upper body. You can see me drop back down into the bike. I drop that inside shoulder, so I'm lent into the bike. As I push on those cranks, loading that back wheel up, and then explode it up into the air. I'm doing a big weight shift sideways, looking at where I want to land. Ruts on the trail. You've got three different lines. You've got a middle one, top one, and quite a low one. Now, when you get stuck in a rut, it's horrible. It's hard to get out of because you can cross your things, you can slide out. So now this is where you bring in that side hop technique. So when you're in a hole, you can go, right, I remember that technique, I remember the side hop. Kind of come with a gradual bit of power, then you give it a kick on the pedals, you know, side hop out of it. So you would want to side hop to the top, which is a little bit difficult, but if you find yourself in the rut quite earlier on, you can use this lower bit to hop up a bit easier. But if you find yourself in there, Oh, you're stuck in the rut, and it's going to be quite hard to get out of that. Also, when you're coming down the trail, and you want to go down that trail there, you can kind of side hop across this, because you don't want to ride through that, especially when it's wet, it can grab your front wheel and just hook you and throw you off the bike. So, using that side hop technique to hop across to get down that trail is key, and it's perfect. Okay, to finish off this little video, I've made this lift, well, I've found it, actually. It's a figure of eight, but there's obstacles in this figure of eight that you're gonna bring some of those techniques we've shown you within the video into this here. So Chris and I are gonna move around this thing, using every element just to get around this without putting your feet down. Are you ready, Chris? This is quite tight, this one here. And then over that log, that's big. I think so. Oh, that's, oh, that's close. Nice, trials, trials to trials. Hopefully this video has given you a little bit of a help and understanding that you can use those trial skills out there on the trail to help you get through a trail safely. All that tech stuff made a lot easier if you can learn these basic skills for sure. Yeah, don't forget to hit the globe to subscribe because you're missing out some cool content. If you want to see another rad video where speed versus style, click over here. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like. We'll see you at the next one. Yeah.